Hey, test, test, test. Hope you guys can hear me. Gonna look over here to make sure that we're good to go. All right, my name is uh, Jonathan Sharp, and I am the uh, PvP coordinator here at ArenaNet. And today we're gonna give you guys a quick sneak peek at uh, our new map that you guys will be able to play today if you are on the live servers. Um, we're having some connection issues right now to Twitch. As you can see, it's a little bit laggy. I'm so sorry about that. Um, doing the best we can, so I'm sorry it's gonna lag a little bit, but I still wanted you guys to see this stuff ahead of time anyway, because we're really excited about it, and we think you guys will be excited about it too. So, uh, as you can see, I'm on one of our own private servers. Nobody can get in but us, so let's jump right in, and I'll show you guys what we're gonna be looking at. Uh, the name of the new map, as you can see, is the Temple of the Silent Storm. So, here's a quick, uh, quick look from above. You can see. This is what the map's going to look like. As you can tell, we are using the Coden architecture for this map. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with the Coden, the Coden are the really awesome um, bears. They're basically polar bears who walk around with uh, plate mail on, and they basically want to achieve balance in all things in life. Uh, they have a very strong um, uh, American Indian or a uh, Tibetan monk kind of way of speaking. They're very slow, they're very methodical, they're very wise. Um, so this is one of the code and training areas. I'm going to pan really slowly because I know that's lagging a little bit. Uh, this is going to be one of their training dojos. This is where the new PvP map will take place. As you can see, it's a snow environment, which is new for us. Um, the two different teams have their little airships that they've come to this island on. The, the red, as you can see here, and the blue over here. You'll be able to come to this map and start training as if you were one of the code -ins. So you'll be able to kick the crap out of other players and doing some meditation while you're doing it. So the secondary mechanic for this map, as you guys may or may not know, all maps in GW2 that are conquest based are uh, going to have a secondary mechanic. Now when I say conquest, bring up my map for you real quick. You're going to have three different points that you want to capture in this map. You have the temple, you have the gate, and you have the altar. Uh, these are the three conquest points. On top of that though, you're also going to have the secondary mechanic. The secondary mechanic for this map is going to be these really powerful buffs. You can see one across the distance, if you can kind of see where my mouse is at. There's one right there, it's not spawned yet. There's also one right behind me in the scroll room. So as you can see, the code and have these markings that kind of show where each of these uh, meditations will be. And as you meditate with each of these, once the map starts, it's going to give your team powerful buffs. Now, the one that's over here is the exact mirror of what I can achieve right here for this meditation. Now, these meditations will give my team plus three for every kill that you get on the map, which means if you have both, you're going to get a plus six. Now, basically, a kill is usually worth five. So if your team has both of those, you'll be getting 11 points for a kill instead of just five. So your team score is going to jump up pretty quickly. Uh, I'm being told that the mic is too close. Is this better? Let me see if I can use my peripheral and still get a thumbs up. <laughs> That's a little bit better. So, as you can see in this map, uh, we've just shown you two of the buff locations. Here's another buff location right here. As you can see, there's a different symbol right here. This is going to be the cap point bonus buff. Now, if you meditate at this point once it spawns in, uh, your team will be getting a bonus point every time the cap points are scored. Now, normally the way that this works is you'll have three different points, and for every point that your team owns, you get one point every time that the points tick. So if you have two points, you'll get two points. If you have three, you get three every time. Now, if you have that this buff for your team, um, you'll actually be getting plus one for each of those. So if you have all three, you'll be getting six per pulse. So it's really important to keep the enemy team off of this when it spawns. Uh, same thing for the kill points. So you can either get bonus points through killing people if you have the buff, or you can do it through the cap points. So both of those ways, both of those ways will actually help you to um, dominate the other team if you're able to control those two different buffs. And I'm going to move around a little bit and show you guys one of the other cap points over here. Um, as you guys can see, uh, we were really influenced when we were making this map by some of the older stuff that, uh, that I personally used to play and some of the guys, but like the old Quake 2, Quake 3, Unreal Tournament, that kind of stuff. We, we wanted to get a lot more verticality in this map. So you can see all the way down to here, like we're really trying to push what an MMO game can actually do as far as verticality goes in relation to map design. So that's what we really wanted to try to push. So you can see that you can be down here, and you can do a lot of cutbacks and stuff like that to kind of fool people. Maybe they just jumped over this bridge right here, and then I can come up from behind them again, and then I can snare them, and then I can go back to the point, that kind of stuff. So with all the verticality, you can knock people off, you can pull them around, you can do teleportation stuff to jump around the map. Um, it's going to be really important. And when I say verticality, I, I really mean it. So if you guys are ready, let's hope it doesn't lag here too much. But I can be up top, and let's say that I'm fighting somebody. I can actually knock them down into these two pits right here. And it's a long way down on these pits. 
Oh yeah, I'm being told I need to put this on top of my head. Is that even better? I hope that's is that is that sexy? Let's, yeah, that's pretty sexy. I like that. That's nice. All right, let me uh, drink some Minimade to kind of. Mmm, it's good apple juice. All right. So as you can see, I've dropped down to a um a subterranean layer basically. I'm getting some. I have multiple thumbs up, thumbs up akimbo right there. So that's really good from my director over here, the beautiful Gina who's helping me. Um, so as you can see, I have another point over here, and this is the, the bottom area. This is the bottom buff. Now this thing is not going to come in until about six minutes then into the map's uh, runtime. And this thing right here is basically, if you can channel it, uh, you can meditate on it, it's going to basically reset all the cap points and give all the cap points to your team which is going to be a huge combat mechanic if you can get it. Um, so you really want to fight over this thing once it does come up. And you will see notes uh, in the map. You'll hear the, um, the announcers yell out, hey, you know, the, the cap point has, uh, or sorry, a buff has just respawned for the taking, stuff like that, except his, his voice is much cooler than mine. Um, and you'll also see something on the mini map. You'll see the icons for the different uh, buffs as they are able to be taken by each team. You have some underwater combat that can happen in here as well. And you can see the two holes where you can drop down. So this is one and this is the other from above. Uh, and then if you get knocked down here, it's going to take you a lot of time to get back up. It's, it's not too long, but the fact that it's those, you know, 10, 10, 11 seconds to get back up in the map. And if you come to this point, that's fine. But to get back into the fight, it's going to take a while. So you have to be really careful when you're fighting on those vertical areas. But that's one of the things we wanted to try with this map is to really push the verticality. And you know, punish people for for their spacing, and make people have to really pay attention to that kind of stuff. As the bottom buff uh, on the map is captured, you'll actually see the actual um, this bell right here will actually have a massive blue glow or a massive red glow to send to indicate which team actually took the buff, and that's a really really cool thing. Uh, you'll actually hear this gong go off throughout the entire map when it happens as well. So we're trying to give you those in-game elements that, that let you, like, if you're fighting somebody, you can hear the gong going off behind you, and you'll be able to know, you know, if somebody's actually taken it or not without having to take your attention off the current fight that you might be in. So we're trying to enforce that through multiple ways. Um, Darren Claypool, the uh, the designer for this map, he's also put in a lot of these really cool little cubby holes. And this is something that we did on uh, the Forest of Niflhel, if you recall. If you guys have played that map, there's a lot of little hiding spots, and we like that idea. So as you can see, this is kind of like a, um, a cave that's kind of like it's already been um, blocked off by this ice that's formed in here. But you can see how it's, you can kind of just watch the cap point and just watch and watch and watch and wait for your moment. And then you can jump out on your enemies and just um, ambush them when they're not ready really for you. Uh, we've got a lot of spots in the map where you can do this type of thing. Um, so I've shown you two of the points. That's the gate, and we've already we've already seen the altar and the gate. So let's go up to the temple and look at the temple. Uh, again, here's another spot where you can hide from people. Uh, you can jump in here and you can hide, and people won't be able to see you. Again, this goes back to some of the other games that we've enjoyed in the past. We wanted to bring in some of those elements into an MMO, uh, being able to hide and having the verticality of a very uh, vertical map. Um, I'm trying to not pan too quickly, but you can see all the different places you can see. I could jump down here, I could double back on where I just was, or I can flank the back point. Go up this way, let's do that. <coughs> so, as you get into here, this is going to be the temple. This is a really awesome area, it's got this massive, uh, this massive fire up here, it's got this uh, ice on the side over here. This is going to be one of the temple areas that the Conan would use to kind of to worship. And um, this is one of those areas that we think is going to be really cool because it's got a lot of verticality on the sides. But in the middle there's a lot of space, which means that you can have some really cool fights here. You're not going to get your feet stuck on little bitty props and stuff like that. It's going to be a really cool place to fight. But at the same time we've got a choke point right here that you can choke. Um, so people are coming in and you have like a lot of traps. Maybe you have line attacks. Maybe you have AOE attacks. You can punish people for coming through here, and they know that if you, they've either got to come through this door, or they're going to have to come through the top. So it allows you to play both of those areas uh, with your AOE and your ground control skills. So we think we're going to get a lot of cool stuff out of that. Uh, this map right now is going to be in beta. We're just going to let you guys see it now because we feel like it's close enough that we want you guys to see it. Uh, but we want to get feedback from players on, on the buffs and maybe the layout. Uh, if there's anything that you guys think that we could add to the map. It won't be in our uh, tournament rotation yet, uh, but it's one of those maps we would like to get into our tournament rotation. Uh, but we wanted players to give us feedback on it and see what they thought about it. Um, we, uh, we are really active on the forums, um, even though sometimes we don't post in there as much as we would like to. We're still watching those. So if you guys are in there, like, feel free to put your ideas up. Uh, sorry, I've been sick a couple days. What's up? Okay. <coughs> 
So I've just been told that the build actually will be going live in about an hour to an hour and a half, which is cool. So in about an hour, an hour and a half, you guys can actually be in here playing this map on the live servers. Um, and as you can tell, it's, um, I, I mean, I'm not an artist in any sense of the word. I, I still do stick figures. I, I have artists to do art for me <laughs> and I have programmers to do math for me because I'm just a lowly designer. Um, but I'm just blown away with what Darren's done for this map. Uh, it just it captures the feel of what we wanted out of the Codens, but it also gives us the the gameplay that I wanted as a designer out of the map, which was the verticality that I experienced in old maps. I don't know if you guys play Quake 2, but like you know the edge, um, just the verticality of frag pipe, that kind of stuff for Quake 2. Um, even looking at Counter Strike, you know, you look at Aztec if you go over bridge, like the verticality of looking up covering bridge and like uh, trying to watch the bottom areas people come through the water. Like, I, I just love that aspect of first person shooters of having to watch the verticality uh, of an entire map. And that's something that we wanted to get in here. Um, so we made sure that we, when we were designing the map, was to make sure that you had really good line of sight to each, each of these buff points. So, like we've just talked about, you know, watching bridge on Aztec and Counter Strike. I don't know if you guys have played Counter Strike, but that's an example of a map. Um, you want to be able to see these key locations from a long way away. So as you can look around at this point, you can see that there's not very much obstructed on either side. So people can see if somebody's trying to take this buff. And if you're channeling one of the buffs, trying to capture it, it takes about five seconds to capture one of the buffs right now. Uh, we can adjust that time, you know, with player feedback. But as you're trying to take those, people can knock you out of your channel, which will um, preclude you from being able to take the different buffs, which is why if you notice up here, same thing people can see over here so if they see somebody running towards one of the buffs they can tell their team hey somebody's going to the east side claw buff you know somebody gets the east side claw and they'll know that they need to get to that buff and stop somebody from taking it same thing with the middle points the only one that's really hard to see is the one that's down below but it only comes up once a game so we want that to be kind of a a timing thing that you have to really watch the timing of that buff and be there be ready for the map to uh to spawn that buff for you and then pounce on it as soon as it's ready and uh, some of the tactics that you guys will want to be using are some of the same things you probably use on Forest of Niflhel if you're playing that with uh, with a team. Is if Spawnier comes up or if uh, the Chieftain comes up, uh, Chieftain Utahine, if those guys come up, you want to use a lot of your knockback skills, a lot of your snares, a lot of your chills, uh, your dazes, your stuns, like blowouts, whatever you have. Keep people off of those buffs, keep them off those NPCs while the rest of your team tries to take them. So it's not about everybody just stand there and let's all just try to last hit together. It's more of let's have one guy assigned to do the last hitting and then everybody else control somebody else on the other team. Kind of like, you know, basketball if you're setting a screen or football if you're declaring blockers for a running back. You want to have certain people blocking off of the people so that your key player can get through and make the play that you need them to make and get that last hit. In this case, you want them to get that channel so that they can get the channel for the whole team and then the entire team can benefit from that buff if you have really strong teamwork. So then in our internal testing, that's kind of how the game is developed and it's, it's a lot of fun. So we're really excited for you guys to play this today in the build, and uh, yeah, we're just really proud of it, and I don't know, we're looking forward to the feedback you guys give us, and uh, taking that into consideration, and if there's good ideas, we'd love to put them in, so uh, just watch the forums and post any ideas that you have there. Uh, anything else you want us to say, or are we good to go? So I think that's pretty good to go. So. Um, this build uh, will be up, I think, within an hour, hour and a half. So as you guys get in there, enjoy it. And uh, I will be on live today, too. So I'll be in there with you guys playing. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, let's look at this the snow coming off of this. There it is. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I'll be in there with you guys today. And uh, we just look forward to playing with you. And uh, thanks for playing. And thanks for your, your interest in the game. And I uh, really look forward to playing with you guys. So that's us. Uh, this is Jonathan uh, signing off. Bye-bye.